Hey friend, Chris Vandeviver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, let's dig into tempo and how to make manual adjustments and more automatic adjustments to tempo in your projects. So your project can go faster at certain points, slower at other points, how to create tempo curves between tempo nodes so you can slow things down or speed things up. We'll dig into tempo sets so you can create multiple sets of different varying tempos to see what works best for your project and how to use more automated features such as the tempo operations. And also we'll dig into the MIDI environment, a scary place, but we're going to create a tempo fader so you can actually record tempo adjustments into your projects. I have a project here. It's at a global tempo of 75 BPM. And we know this just by looking at the LCD in the control bar. And let's take a quick listen so we know what we're working with as we start to play with tempo. Cool, pretty chill, pretty low key. Now, obviously the easiest way to adjust the tempo of your project is just to select the tempo in the LCD display and drag up or down or type in your preferred value. I'm gonna click and drag. Now it turns out I have multiple tempo events. So right here, the global track lane for the tempo track, just gonna select and delete it. Okay, let's drag up and down. We can drag this up to 83 BPM, you know, as high or low as you want. We'll just leave it at its original tempo. And you can see that the tempo track lane is adjusting in response to these changes. The tempo track lane resides in the global track lanes. And you just click this button right here to show or hide the global track lanes. If you control click or right click with the mouse, we have many different options from arrangement markers to the movie track lane, signature, transposition. And just by selecting each one, we reveal it in the global track lanes and we can adjust their boundaries as well. We're just gonna focus on tempo and we're gonna zoom in on this section of my project. Making adjustments to the tempo track lane is super easy. You really just click anywhere on this line with your mouse. And what we create is a tempo node. At this point, we can take the line on the right side of the tempo node and just drag it up. Just like that, we made a tempo adjustment just to this particular part of our song. We've boosted it by 14 BPM. And we could make another node right here, bring it down, right back to our original tempo. And we can hear those changes in real time. Awesome. We can also adjust the curve of the tempo just by clicking on one of these tempo nodes, dragging. So check it out. We're creating a curve that kind of scales down. We can hear it right here. And we can also speed up as well. So let me just create two more. We'll bump this up and we'll speed this up. Now I'm trying to grab the top tempo node and that's not gonna give me the desired effect. I'm gonna click the bottom one instead. And now we're creating that ramp effect. And if you find you're having a hard time playing with the tempo just because the scale is not fine enough for you, just click and drag right here and you can adjust it as you see fit. So we can drag this down to five if we needed to or higher. Just clicking on the extremes of both the bottom and the top of the tempo, as you can see. Now, before we get crazy with tempo, we probably should backtrack a hair and start creating some tempo sets. And tempo sets allow you to create a breadcrumb trail so that you can try out all sorts of crazy tempos for your project without losing the original version or losing the various versions of tempo changes you've created. If we go right over here to tempo and click on it, right here we have tempo sets and we can create a new set or duplicate the set. We're gonna duplicate and now we're able to name this set. So let's just call it second set and we can flip between the two. So let's create some tempo adjustments We'll adjust this, maybe adjust this guy, make that change. Okay, so now we have the second set. If we go back to the untitled set, we're right back where we started. And we can rename the untitled version as well, just by going to tempo, tempo sets, rename set. And we'll call this the original set. And it's really that simple. You can make all the changes you want and flip between them and see how they sound. We can even duplicate 
this second version, call it third version. And we can delete it later if we decide we're not so into the third set. But this really makes it very easy and simple to adjust tempo within Logic. And obviously the finer you zoom in, the easier it is to really scale things exactly where you want them to be, not just on a bar per bar basis, but also beat or even finer. But for some, adjusting tempo within the tempo track lane might not be high enough resolution for their needs. So that's why we're gonna navigate to the list editors right here in the control bar and select the tempo tab within the list editors or key command D to open these up. And let's kind of scale back on our project. Now you can see here that as I adjust the playhead position, the line within the list editor adjusts along with it. And the list editors can feel very esoteric. They can feel very like IT, just not very approachable, but the tempo list editor doesn't have to be so unapproachable. It's pretty much exactly the same. We could place the playhead anywhere we wish and create a new node for the tempo. You can see we've created it and we can adjust the tempo just by clicking and dragging or typing in a specific value. We can also adjust the exact placement of that tempo node. We can click on the bars, we can click on beats, we can click on finer resolution if we need to, and we can create tempo sets right from within the list editor as well. Personally, I find drawing in the tempo track lane to be a little more intuitive, but still, it can be helpful to have a list laid out for you of all these tempo variations and changes so you can be as specific as you need to be on a per tempo node basis. But we also have tempo operations that can help us make changes to our tempo in a group sort of fashion. If we go right here to edit, under tempo, go right under tempo operations, we have a menu that looks, you know, even more esoteric, even more IT, but really it's not that big a deal, I promise you. The tempo operations provide us with various operations that we can affect onto the tempo track lane, such as creating a tempo curve or creating a constant tempo, scaling the existing tempo, stretching it, thinning it out, randomizing it, or rounding the existing tempo changes. For example, let's create a constant tempo for the bars that we have here from bar 50 to bar 66. Now you can adjust the position of these bars just by clicking and dragging on the different positions from within the tempo operations. You can also use the cycle range. And this might be easier for some users just to use the cycle range to set the exact position of any tempo changes you wanna create. I wanna set the tempo back to the original tempo of this project. Now I could just select all the tempo notes here, hit delete on my Mac keyboard, or I could just type in a constant tempo of 75 BPM. We can see that the adjustment will be made, but there will not be an adjustment made past bar 66. You hit apply, look at that. We're at the original tempo, except at bar 66, where it resumes at whatever crazy tempo I had it previously. We can also scale our tempo changes as a group. So check it out. If we go down to scale existing tempo changes from bar 50 to bar 66, we'll set the scale to something like 30%. And once I hit apply, all of these tempo nodes will be boosted in terms of their tempo by 30%. Crazy, now let's take a listen to what this sounds like. Crazy, and we can even create a tempo curve. I'll set this to 75 BPM, but we'll scale it to 101 BPM. We'll set the curve type so it kind of ramps up and we need to set the density or the resolution of the adjustment, which means we could have the scale just bar by bar or we could set it as fine a resolution as 30 second notes. And we can hear what that sounds like. And it's gradually speeding up. Okay, this is all well and good, but what happens when you're working with audio? Because audio is a totally different beast. MIDI, the step sequencer, drummer, these are all linked to the tempo of your project. Whatever the project tempo is, those things will adapt to the tempo. Well, let's take a look at some audio that actually was sent to me by my collaborator. This is a song that's kind of in the beginning stages and we're just demoing some ideas. And if we go right here to this 
area of the vocals. I'm going to loop it. We're going to take a quick listen to what these vocals sound like as they are, and then we're going to adjust the tempo of the vocals to make sure that they adapt with the project as well. Here we go. Sometimes I sit in my car and drive myself mad, convinced that I want all the things that I already have. Oh. Okay, so if we use those tempo operations again, edit tempo, tempo operations, I want to scale the tempo starting at bar five. So I'll just select my cycle range and set it to bar five to bar 10. And I'm going to have the tempo scale up to 100 BPM. And let's hear this applied and let's hear what the vocals sound like with these tempo changes. Sometimes I sit in my car and drive myself mad, convinced that I want all the things that I already... Okay, the vocals are clearly not following along with the project. This is a problem. Now, with any sort of audio that's recorded in Logic, Logic embeds tempo data into those audio files. And the simple solution really could just be go to Flex and Follow, make sure that you've selected that track, and go to On or On and Align Bars or On and Align Bars and Beats. Now, we've seen some sort of change, and if we open up Flex Mode just by clicking on the Flex Mode button, we can see that a whole bunch of Flex markers have been placed on this audio file but these audio files were provided by my collaborator. She recorded them into Ableton, and I'm not entirely sure if Ableton embeds tempo data, but let's hear how Flex and Follow did. Sometimes I sit in my car and drive myself mad, convinced that I want all the things that I already... Okay, so that didn't help. Now, maybe if I clicked on the Smart Tempo option in the LCD and went to Smart Tempo Project Settings and had set the set imported audio files, to align on bars or beats. Maybe this would have helped. I'm guessing probably not in this case. So instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna backtrack on our tempo. We're gonna select our audio region and go to edit and go down to tempo and go down to remove original recording tempo from this file. And we're just going to scrape any tempo metadata from this audio file, whether it was provided by Ableton or any other DAW or if Logic just use Smart Tempo to try to estimate the tempo of this region. Logic is gonna ask me, do you really wanna do this? Absolutely. And now Logic is gonna go through and kind of refresh the entire project. But now our audio file should be able to flex and follow with any tempo changes. Let's go to flex and follow and turn it on. And let's go down to edit, tempo, tempo operations. And again, we're going to adjust tempo from 75 BPM to 100 and hit apply. Now let's hear what these vocals sound like with the tempo that's getting faster and faster. Sometimes I sit in my car and drive myself mad, convinced that I want all the things that I already have. Now our vocals are getting a little choppy because the automatic flex mode that Logic chose with flex and follow was slicing, which is really best for drums. We're gonna select monophonic. It might still be a little iffy, with artifacts, but it will be a lot smoother than slicing. Sometimes I sit in my car and drive myself mad, convinced that I want all the things that I already have. Oh. Your mileage may vary. For your purposes, with your particular audio, you might find that this works wonderfully and has no artifacts, but this is how you would get audio to conform with the changing tempo if it was imported from elsewhere and not recorded in Logic. So the last piece is how do you record tempo variations into Logic? We're going to go back to the end of our project here, and we're going to dig into the very scary place of the MIDI environment. I don't want to give you a false impression. I'm not a MIDI environment guy. I don't know really a thing about it, but this one thing I do know. So let's dig into window right at the top here in our menu bar and go down to open the MIDI environment. The MIDI environment looks a lot like previous versions of Logic. I'm just going to go to new go down to fader and go down to specials and tempo control. Now we get this pop-up from Logic. We're not gonna worry about it. And right at the bottom of the window, we can see that a tempo slider has been created. You can actually adjust the size of the tempo slider just by clicking on the bottom right edge and dragging out. So our tempo's at 75. I'm gonna select 
one of these software instrument tracks. I'm going to turn on record. And we're going to record our tempo variations. Got to get back here. Okay, so check it out. I'm going to press record and then I'm going to start adjusting the tempo with this tempo fader in the MIDI environment. And we're going to hear the tempo change over time. And once I'm done recording, we'll see these tempo changes printed to the tempo track. Here we go. And there it is. There are all those variations that we made using the MIDI environment, and they've been recorded into the tempo track lane. So if you really want to get more of a human feel to any tempo variations in your project, it's really that simple, just digging into the MIDI environment. So I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, YLogicProRules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Thanks so much.